I bet you that one is a bit more, how would you say? Yeah, wow. This one is super soft, rubbery. This one is hard as a rock. Welcome back everybody on this episode of Milner Drive. We are going to be taking apart our N52 cylinder head. Um, we're gonna be taking a look at the exhaust valves, um, taking out this broken one, looking at the part number, and uh, ordering a new valve for this. So if you're interested in rebuild projects like this, uh, we're completely rebuilding this BMW N52 engine. I'm just trying to teach people along the way, also as I learn, so. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button. We're halfway through the build and it's going really well so far. So let's get into this. So right now we're gonna be taking off the exhaust uh, cam bearing, I wanna call it a ledge, it's not a ledge. Cam bearing holder thing to try and get at this cylinder six um, broken exhaust valve. Now we've already taken apart the Vanos um, sprockets and timing chain and all that stuff. You do have to, it says you should buy this tool that holds this together, but honestly, a lot of people on YouTube are just um, taking it off and putting it back on. You do have to watch out to prop, prop this, put this up on blocks, because at top dead center, um, the cylinder, sorry, cylinder two's exhaust uh, valves are actually out. So if you put this on the ground, it's gonna, it can push up and damage the exhaust valves, which, we do not want to do so just be wary of that so i think we're just going to start in the middle and untorque towards the edge and take off this cam cover take a look at all the the bearings or yeah and see if they're good and then we'll take the whole cam out so this is a e10 i believe an E10 Torx, so let's start taking these off. Alright, let's take a look. This one, hmm, I mean, has such a slight lip. You can clearly see that there's a there's a line there, and I can catch it with my with my finger. The rest look okay. Right here too, here. No, it looks okay. Let's take the cam out. Got E2 hands for that. Bottoms look way better. No scrapes or scratches or anything. The only thing I see here is there is a little tiny line there. Well, as you can see, that's not good, but I think where that sits, that's this line right here. So, I don't know. What is this stuff? This is quite interesting. There's this like black, is it just sludge? I don't know what this is. There's like this black sludge right here. Is it just sludge? Is there a hole there? 
Hmm. All the rockers look okay. Now the hydros you can actually pull out. Now you can't mix these up. So when you take them out, you should know exactly where they go back in because they're already worn to the camshaft um, lobes. So you should be careful taking these out. One small line there, but no, not a big deal. Wow, everything looks shiny as can be. This head looks really good. This just pulls out like that. And this should disconnect or oh, it has a little clip on it and if you actually press these together well maybe I'm wrong this should be squishy nope nope maybe I'm wrong well, we'll just keep those together. These are the infamous hydro tappets that are noisy, that click and when the car is cold. I changed my all to 5WD40 and that clicking stuff went away. So try that in your car. So what we want to do is use this tool that I bought on eBay. It's a universal valve steel, steel removal tool. It gives you these little hats that allow you to pull the keepers out with a uh, with a, a magnet. I have to go grab my extendable magnet thing. Um, and you tighten this side down by putting this side on the spring side and this side right on the valve. You tighten it down and that allows you to pull the keepers out. You release this and then we can pull our valve out. So I'll show you how that works right now. right there is cracked so let's take that out so when I flipped over the head some of these fell out these are the head stud washers that I thought weren't even in here there are two sizes let me grab another side there's a smaller size oh that's the wrong one no that is the right size there are two sizes smaller one for the m50 bolts those go on the outer part in position 1 2 13 and 14 and there's the bigger ones that are the T60 Torx bolts. So I'm going to quickly grab all of these before I lose them. You just take a, a, a magnet and pull them out. Remember, you'll have to put them back in, which will be extremely difficult. Um, but I don't want to lose these, so I'm just going to take them all out and uh, before they fall out and I lose them. All right, now let's see if this works. I thought there was a piece that went on the end here, but um, I guess not. So what this is gonna do is we're gonna put this behind the valve, like this. Let's try and get you guys a nice view here. Put it up on some wood, kind of like that. And we'll get into figuring out how to take these springs off. I couldn't order a tool for them, so I, I just went into the hardware store to get some other stuff, but I'll explain that later. So let's start taking this thing apart. So first thing we're gonna do is, um, I've already kind of sized this appropriately. Um, this is the, oh, I don't wanna do this one. I wanna do this one. Let's tighten it down so that the other side is centered on the valve. And so is this side. Looks like that, centered on the valve. I have my little magnet here, pencil magnet, whatever you want to call this. And I'm going to tighten this down. Let me try and move this so you can see the spring. Yeah, other side's still good. And you want to cinch it down enough so you can grab the keepers. Not far enough. I need think I needed to put a longer piece 
this thing on here because it's just about long. So we got one keeper off. I'm just gonna grab that so we don't lose it. We got the next keeper off, just like that. These gonna be these are gonna be very hard to put back in, I bet. I'm just gonna put these down. And then we're gonna loosen this up. The spring and the hat come out. And then we can push the valve out. So I'm looking okay. And then now we want to pull the valve stem seal out and I have a specific set of pliers for this, which I'll go and get, especially to put them back on. But for right now I can just wiggle this a little bit, wiggle and twist. So I actually couldn't get it off with those other pliers, so I went and grabbed these um, valve stem seal pliers. They look like that. They have a nice little um, rounded clamp with a little bit of grooved edges. So it really grabs onto there. And then we go. And I'll put that in there. Twist a little bit, and there you go. Definitely get these. That was easy. So these valve stem seals are totally shot. I mean, the rubber is completely hard. And if we put this back in here, you know, I bet, I bet that still would seal. But it's quite loose in there. And um, yeah. It's not sealing very well, so this was probably smoking, as you can see from the burnt um, carbon in the piston, from the burnt carbon in the cylinder head uh, on the cylinder head. So this is definitely burning some oil. Whether it was rings, you can also see here on the exhaust valve, definitely burning some oil. Um, so that's what happens when you burn oil from your valve stem seals; they get super hard, and they stop sealing properly but it could also be from your rings or your CCV. So I'm gonna set this up. So this one is on this side. Maybe I can put this in here with it. There you go. This one of course doesn't have one. I guess I'll use the broken one. And the keepers, don't forget the keepers. I'm just gonna tape these, tape these keepers um, to my actual piece of cardboard because I definitely do not want to lose them. I mean, you can replace them, but they should go back into each cylinder on each valve because they're already pre-worn. Um, so, yeah. All right, well now I'm gonna repeat that process Two, four, six, eight, ten more times. 8.01 p.m. And we'll take it out. And that's what a valve looks like. Hmm. A little bit of carbon buildup, but not bad. I'm just going to put this back in for a second. little bit of lateral movement. I mean, it looks okay to me. No scoring or anything crazy. I'll clean this up and we'll get ourselves a already ordered a new valve. Those are the valve guides. Sometimes those wear out, especially if your uh, valve got chomped. But I think guys were really lucky. Hmm. It's almost burning oil. But these two are dry. Piston four and five. Burning oil. So 
check the valve stem seal. So, this is what I wanted to point out tonight. This is the valve stem seal. It's a piece of metal, and on top, there's a tiny little piece of rubber. Now I'm confused as to why this cylinder is so clean and this one isn't. Because it looks like it's been burning a bit of oil. This one's wet. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Maybe this is just... I don't know. So, I'm going to take this off. And what I'm looking for is if this rubber is hard. If it's really hard and worn out, it's not going to seal properly against this. Here's a new one. Got a new set here. They seem to be the same, as you can see. I bet you that one has a bit more, how would you say, yeah, wow. This one is super soft, rubbery. This one is hard as a rock. So these have been in here for, I would say more than five years, or it saw some pretty hot temperatures. So I'm gonna definitely be replacing as many of these as possible on here. Yeah, because it looks like Looks like that's why it was burning oil. So, that's your valve. Now there's a special little um, piece of plastic when you're installing these. Of course, you're gonna clean up the block, which I'll do later, but you shove that in there. You have to push it down with the tweezers, the correct tool. But um, first you normally have the valve in there, which I'll show you. You normally put this over top of it so that you don't damage um, so that you don't damage the seal, valve stem seal. And you douse this in oil, lube it up with oil, and you just put that over top of it so it slides over top of it nice without catching or tearing or anything. And then you push it down with the I'll show you guys all that in a minute. Several days later. All right, everybody, so welcome back to another episode of Build and Drive. Um, we finally got our valve that came in the mail. There's the part number. I have the zero point, uh, sorry, I have a five millimeter shaft valve. You can get six millimeter valves for some very specific engines, but these are the ones that um, I believe fit the 2.5 liter engine. So, um, So let's just open this up. Please remember to double check your part numbers just in case your engine has a little bit different um, one. So this is a BMW valve. Um, let's just open this up. Nice. Wow, nice and clean. It is the same size. And it is the same length. So we're doing good there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna start taking apart this head and uh, put it back together with new valve stem seals and of course lap the valve. I have to lap this valve into the head. Uh, once it's all cleaned up so that it fits well and seals well, but I'll get into that in a bit. So what I've done here is I've just laid out some cardboard. And because I've kind of started backwards, I have piston six on the left, all the way to piston one on the right. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the hydros and the lifters. Um, I've numbered each kind of area by piston. I'm putting the piston ring, uh, sorry, I'm putting the valve ring and hat and I'm taping down the keeper. So valve, I'll put the valves here just indirectly into the cardboard in a second and we'll have lifter, 
valve, spring, and keeper all in one area. Um, and we'll, we'll take apart this head, clean it up, and rebuild the exhaust side, at least today. So that didn't take me too long. We got all of the uh, valves out with all their hardware and stuff. The valve stem seals all were pretty uh, tough, but um, the, the, the lifters looked okay, the hydras looked okay, um, the valves are all crudded up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little experiment with these valves. I'm gonna take them and put them in different um, types of cleaner and we'll see which one cleans carbon the best. Um, but I'll link that down below. I'll put that in a different video. Also, next up, we're going to figure out how to take off this uh, Valvetronic gear here, the extra lifter and eccentric shaft, and so that we can get at the valve stem seals on the intake side. But again, that will be in another video. Um, if you guys found this interesting and helpful, you know, hit the thumbs up button um, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Thanks. Thank you.